Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, it's What Makes This Song Great, Episode 70. The band is Pantera and the song is Walk. Coming up next. I can't tell you how many times I've been asked when I'm going to feature Pantera in one of these What Makes This Song Great videos. Well, today's the day. In honor of doing the video, I thought, oh, I need to go find my Vinnie Paul snare. Well, all I could find was my Vinnie Paul snare box, but the snare's around here somewhere. Walk was the fourth single off the 1992 release, Vulgar Display of Power. The song was written by the entire band. It was produced by one of my favorite rock producers, Terry Date. The song begins with a classic riff. <laughs> Okay, so this is a 12-8 riff. I want to talk about that first. What does that mean? 12-8 is basically 4-4, four, four, but it's triplet bass. So if you think of it like this, I conduct 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So four groups of three. It's like a shuffle. The riff is in a D tuning. Everything's tuned down a whole step and then a little bit more just to make it heavier and so it's harder to tune your guitar with when you're trying to play along, right? So you got your. Let's talk about the opening riff. There's like a little quarter bend with a vibrato on it. It's really actually hard to do. But what does it feature? It features that flat two, the sound of metal. So the second half of the riff goes to the third fret power chord on the A string, then first fret power chord, then it goes to this fourth interval there between the first fret of the A string and D string, which is really like a power chord that you would play with a fifth in the bass. You could play it up here. But you could actually play it up there. And it would sound pretty much the same. When it gets to, to the climbing riff, that riff features the notes one, flat two, flat three, and then flat six, flat five, and then major seven. So that would really be one, flat two, flat three. You could say four, flat five, flat six, major seven. Which is kind of this hybrid Locrian major seven scale. Okay, so let's talk about what is great about Rex Brown's bass part. Well, he does different things each time when you solo the track. Check it out. Now that's definitely first fret there with almost no bend, right? And then the second time, he's playing, definitely he's playing three, two, one, uh, or second fret, first fret, open. Listen. That sounds like that. Active there. Okay, so in this part, he's going. Anytime you have power chords in the bass, it makes it sound a lot more intense. So we got. The bass and guitars play in unison on the riff. Next, let's check out what Vinnie Paul is playing on the drums. Start from the top. Great fill here. And right here. And then. So, do, do, dead, and do, do, dead, and do. All those fills are based on triplets and the whole groove. Do, do, da, do. 
The da deca da deca da deca da deca da. That's a triplet feel. Next, we're into the verse where Phil enters. Check it out. Can't you see? I'm easily bothered by persistence. One step from lashing out at you. you want it? Let's check out the vocals by themselves. Here, check it out. Can't you see? I'm easily bothered by persistence. One step from lashing out at you. You want in to get under my skin and call yourself a friend. I've got more friends like you. What do I do? One thing that's really cool about the verse part are the guitar stabs halfway through. Check it out. One step from lashing out at you. You want in? So right there, let me solo the guitar. So we've got this power chord up here that is based on the major seventh, if you think of it. But it's a major seventh, but it's got the fifth in the bass. So it goes. So the lead into the chorus here. We have a caveman triplet fill that Vinny plays. Check it out. Then he goes to the bell of the ride. The chord progression of the chorus goes like this. We go to the flat seven, three, four, to the flat five, to the five, and then. So once again, flat seven, flat five, to the natural five, and then back down to the D. What's cool about the bass in the chorus is that it's led into that flat seven by the major seven. So it's major seven, and then flat seven, and they're all power chords in the chorus. Let's check it out, listen. Riff. Power chords. Any metal song that you wanna make sound big, play power chords in the bass. It'll sound even bigger if the guitar has the fifth in the bass in addition to the root and the bass is playing power chords. That's how you get really huge guitar sounds by having that power chord be the foundation of the bass part. I'm gonna solo the vocals in Pro Tools so you can hear what Phil is singing in the chorus. Is there no standard anymore? You can't be something you're not Be yourself, by yourself, stay away from me A lesson learned in life Check this out here A lesson learned in life Known from the dawn of time Respect Walk What did you say? Respect! Walk! Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? So we begin verse two like this. Run your mouth when I'm not around. It's easy to achieve. You try and then the kicks to the guitar. Killer. And then back to the chorus. Again with the caveman fill. Then we come to the end of the... And then... So at the end of the chorus here, I call this the tag or the shout chorus, right? Where everybody shouts along with the band or with Phil. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? No. And then we're into the solo. Dimebag was a killer guitarist and soloist. 
I remember when he was killed, I was actually working with a guitar player that was really good friends with him. And it was, it was so sad. And I don't know if you know the story about Van Halen and Dimebag. It says, months before his death, Dimebag asked one of his idols, Eddie Van Halen, for a black and yellow striped Charvel bumblebee, like the one pictured in the back cover of the inside sleeve of Van Halen 2. Eddie agreed to make Dimebag a copy of the guitar, but never got around to it. When Eddie learned of the tragic death, he called Dime's widow Rita and asked her if there's anything he could do. And she said, yes, as a matter of fact, could you stripe him a yellow and black guitar? Van Halen said, are you sure you don't want the red, black, and white one? Rita declined, saying, no, Dime told me the yellow and black is the toughest looking. He always thought that. When Van Halen arrived for the viewing, he had the guitar, but it wasn't what Rita expected. He brought his original 1979 Bumblebee Charvel Hybrid Van Halen II to be placed inside Dimebag's casket and buried along with him. From Eddie, Dime was an original and only an original deserves the original. Let's check out Dimebag's solo, Solo. <laughs> Now, I'm not even going to try and play along with the beginning part of the solo because it's so perfectly played. I don't want to even attempt to do it. I just, it's just great to listen to on its own. But this lick, I really dig. And then, diminished. So this first lick here... Um, Got it. You know, if the strings weren't tuned down slightly below D, I wouldn't be able to get that bend. So after the solo, we go back to the chorus. And then we have the one change here. Love it. Spat. Walk. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Walk on home, boy. And the song fades from there. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a new subscriber, remember to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. And if you want to support the channel even more, become a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.